Hey guys, maybe you're not living the strength training lifestyle. Does that mean your muscles are lazy? I don't think it does. If you look back throughout the history of the world, this is the first generation ever that's been told to strength train. It was 2008 when the Department of Health and Human Services issued the first ever federal guidelines to strength train. Prior to that, no formal proclamation was made by a major international health agency to strength train. My parents didn't hear it growing up. Their parents didn't hear it growing up. Nobody heard it. Only people that knew about it were probably a small percent of committed, dedicated health and fitness professionals like myself who've been doing it for a long time. But other than that, globally, this behavior was not on the map. And so when you think about that, you also have to keep in mind, there are a ton of moving parts to a strength workout. It's one thing to say, hey, go take a bike ride, go take a walk, that's fine, that's doable, most people can self-manage that activity. But if you're gonna go strength train, you've gotta figure out what exercises, what's the right form, what's the right starting weight, how many reps, single sets versus multiple sets, how many days of the week do you train, What's the right progression schedule? Do you use free weights, dumbbells, body weight, bands, machines? There are a ton of confusing questions that prevent people from doing this properly. So at the end of the day, I'm recommending some professional supervision to get the ball going with the strength train lifestyle. It's easy to do it wrong. And if you do, you're at high risk for hurting yourself and never returning to the behavior. So get some help, get some coaching, get some supervision, work with someone who knows what they're doing. This will help ensure that you'll be able to benefit from the strength training lifestyle long term. This is day 516 of Train Like a Champion.